Hello, I'm Emily. I'm in my studio and today I'm going to give a little tutorial, some of my best tips about making the horse collage quilt. I've had lots of requests for this, so I am at your service. Um, first of all, before I get started, what I want to say is this is an advanced project. So I assume that if you have purchased this foundation panel, this pattern from me, that you have experience making a collage quilt. If you have never made a collage quilt, stop now and well, you can watch the video, but um, I wouldn't recommend this for your first project because it's a, it's a large project and it takes a lot of hours and it takes some level of expertise in understanding uh, color theory. Um, so speaking of color theory, I need to tell you that I have, color theory is super, super important to me when I am selecting my fabric. And you'll probably hear me mention a few uh, a few terms that come from my understanding of color theory. If you are interested in learning more about color theory, check out my book, Collage Quilter Essentials for Success with Collage Quilts, or you can go to one of my paid videos or join me in a workshop where I teach all about color theory. It's a kind of a deep dive into color theory and design principles of design and whatnot. So anyway, with that, let's move forward. Okay, so first of all, the first thing that I want to point out or talk about are supplies that you need to make this project. Number one is the foundation pattern, pa panel. It's the pattern. This is the actual uh, cloth pre-printed foundation panel that you get when you purchase the pattern. The pattern is only available at a few, um, there might be, a few quilt shops that we might sell to, but really collagequilter.com is the place to find the pattern. That's my website. So collagequilter.com, this is the horse. Uh, so you need the panel, the pattern, and press it, okay? And then the next thing that you're gonna need is loads of fabric. We'll talk about how to select your fabric in a minute. You will need a great pair of fabric scissors, and I love and highly, highly recommend my Karen K. Buckley scissors. So these also are sewn, sold on my website. And then you need uh, an adhesive of your choice. So the original uh, horse collage was made, I think it was made, it was a while ago, so I can't remember, but. I think it was made with seam to seam. You think it was made with seam to seam? The grizzly was made with glue. Okay. And some of the adoration. Okay, you're right. So let me just tell you the difference. It's your, it's your choice, you can choose. When you're making a foundation panel, you can choose what type of adhesive to use. So I originally, when I began as a collage quilt artist, I was using Tacky Glue, Allian's Tacky Glue. Um, it's really sticky and it's kind of messy and there are some properties that I don't love. Um, Fabric Fusion is thinner, you don't have to smear it, uh, but the problem well the great thing about this is that it's permanent and the bad thing about this is that it's permanent and when it gets on your fingers and you wipe it on your pants you're gonna ruin your pants and I have done that twice makes me crazy so my current favorite adhesive and now I've made lots and lots of collage quilts my favorite adhesive is um, double-sided fusible web you can choose any type of fusible web that you like this is the one that I like light steam seam too because it has this repositionable quality that I'm going to show you in a minute. So this is my my preferred adhesive. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside, otherwise we're going to run out of room. All right, so um, I'm going to answer a few questions and then I'm going to tell you how to get started on this project. So we've talked about supplies. Um, one of the questions that I get all the time is where should I start on collage quilts in general, but especially on the horse. My recommendation is to identify the areas that you can see that are clearly the darkest areas of the horse. So this area here, this area here, um, down in this corner, you can see down here. Those areas where the horse is the darkest that's where I recommend starting. And the reason for that is these are big areas. 
so you can start laying down lots of pieces and get your confidence going and um, it also will set the set the parameter set the spectrum so once you know that this is your darkest area you know everything else has to be lighter than this you can't go darker so it's really easy to identify the darkest part of the quilt so that's why i recommend starting there okay another question that i get all the time is what size should i cut my pieces so because this is uh it's a it some areas are larger than other areas of the quilt for example this area here is a pretty large section but then we've got these transition colors in fact let's at our values i should say let me count i've got one two three four i've got four transition areas that are the areas where i'm transitioning from the dark darkest part of the quilt to the highlight on the horse actually it's i think it's right down here so um these pieces in here are going to be a little bit smaller than the pieces that you can do in here in general my rule of thumb is no larger than the palm of your hand and no smaller than your thumbnail so that's my rule of thumb and i will sometimes break it break that rule and go a little bit smaller if i need to very rarely do in fact never never do i make pieces that are bigger than the palm of my hand and part of the reason for that is it looks cohesive to have a collage quilt that has pieces that are you know within a similar range you don't you just don't want to have gigantic pieces and then smaller pieces so um that is what i would say about the size of the piece that's my that's my rule of thumb do we want to show them kind of zoom in on the horse behind you and show them those pieces yeah if you want um yeah or we can post some picture put a picture in this video too but yeah can you zoom in on that and mm -hmm. see that pretty good amelia's behind the camera today she's doing such a great job we have a new camera and we are learning as we go we're learning how to use it so i hope that i hope this turns out good i think it's a nice camera can you see it good yep okay all right great so um the next question i want to address is background um here's a kind of an interesting story about making my quilt if i sit like this amelia can you see that okay so when I originally created this design, I had in, in my head that I wanted this to be a really dark, moody kind of horse portrait with a dark brown background, kind of like one of those paintings um, that you might find in a, in a grand estate in England. I don't know. You, know. you know what I'm saying, okay? So I had this vision in my head of what I wanted this to be. And um, I but i also thought you know what the other thing that i want to do is i want to make a photorealistic horse that doesn't have realistic colors i wanted to challenge myself with understanding value principles of value and see if that really does if it would work to do a, a horse portrait in the values are correct but the colors are not and it worked out great um so i really set to work selecting my color palette for the horse first i i and the color this color palette is a very interesting color palette it is i would say really an analogous color palette it's got blues and purples and uh cool grays in it so it's pretty analogous um and it was a challenging palette to pick out because i was only thinking about challenging myself you do not have to pick an analogous palette like this you can stick to one monochromatic color palette um but back to the background so i'm i'm really glad so i did the foreground i did the horse first on the foundation panel 
and then I did the background afterwards. I did the background last. And I'm really glad I did because I, when I started applying the background fabric after I already had the horse done, and I remember I said I was gonna do brown, dark colors, and I started putting it up there and it looked horrible. I actually had to pull the fabric down three times and sh shift kind of the background palette. Um, and that's what it took to get it right. And it would have been, I think, doubly hard to have the background, to do the background first in the original color scheme that I was thinking. I wouldn't have been able, I wouldn't have been happy with the, with what I'd chosen for the horse. So anyway, that's a long-winded way to say the moral of the story is sometimes it's okay to do the foreground or the main subject first and then worry about the background. And people will be like, well, now wait a minute, don't you layer the background first and then build the foreground um, next? Yeah, that would be the great way to do it, and but it didn't work out that way. And it worked out fine. Um, if you were to get really close to this, you, I mean, sometimes you can still tuck the fabric underneath. So as long if you're using steam seam, that makes it really easy because you can kind of lift that up and tuck pieces underneath it. So, um, that's another advantage for using the double sided fusible web that has that temporary adhesive. Um, okay. So background, that's kind of how I handled the background and I, okay. Now talking about color, I did mention that, that. Um, this horse is generally a monochromatic color scheme that you're thinking of. It's, it's a brown horse, a black horse, a green horse. I don't care what color it is, but um, it's not a pinto or a paint. It doesn't have big blotches of, it's not a black and white horse, it's not a brown and white horse. Um, it doesn't have that kind of coloring. So. Keep that in mind as you select your color palette. Again, if you select a color palette that is uh, monochromatic, it's gonna be a little bit easier. If you select a color palette that's analogous, um, it's going to be more challenging. And challenge is what I was going for with this. <laughs> so that's why I have a color palette that is purples, blues, and um, very cool grays. Okay, so. The last thing that I want to talk about before I do just a kind of a little demonstration is I want to talk about the quilting. Um, I, if there's a quilt that I care about a lot, generally speaking, I will send it to a professional quilter uh, that I really trust and I won't do it myself. Now I'm getting a little bit more confident. I, I feel like I can do what I, I can quilt okay, but um, so I sent this quilt out to my quilter and I generally, when I do that, I just let her decide how to quilt it. The one caveat, the one direction that I will give her is a collage quilt needs to be uh, quilted densely because we're dealing with all these raw edge pieces and we want to make sure that all of those pieces have been tacked down with the quilting. So dense quilting to me means no more than a half inch between stitch lines. She ended up doing an all over meander on this quilt, matching the thread to the fabric she's working on. So she changed thread color multiple times and um, the entire quilt is just a meander and it, it just turned out absolutely beautiful. I love the way she quilted this because the quilting it really just is it's very it's very subtle um with a collage quilt generally i want the collage the fabric the artistry of the um of the collage to be the prominent feature that you see i want the the uh, quilting to be secondary be secondary yeah um okay so that's about the quilting um, Amelia, can you think of anything else that I need to maybe cover? The eye. Okay, the eye. That's right. Somebody had asked about the eye. So here's the thing about this eye. Follow 
the guide that you see on the foundation panel. Do not try to create an eye that looks round with a highlight. That is not appropriate for this animal because number one, a horse's eye is very, very dark. Number two, it's shaded. This has a lot of hair in his eye. It's shaded. It's not going to be reflecting light. It needs to be dark. Um, so it's actually simpler than you think. There's, there's just no reason to treat the eye any different than you would anything else. Just follow the values, okay? So dark here and then overlay a couple pieces to make it look like it has hair in its eye and bam, you're good. Um, I recently did a video tutorial about making eyes, eyeballs for critters. Um, you can take a look at that. That type of eyeball is not appropriate for this. It's just, um, it's just not. And then the third reason why it's not, appro not appropriate for this um, is because if you see an animal in the distance, you are not going to be able to see the highlight that makes it look round because it's too far away. You're going to only see, um, you're, you're, you're going to see this much. This is what, it, this is what makes it look photorealistic because this horse is, you're looking at it from a little bit of a distance. So the fact that there's distance, the animal's eye is all dark and it's got shadow cast from probably the hair. Don't worry about a highlight. Same thing goes with the grizzly. I've seen people try and do the eye and make the eyeball prominent and it doesn't work. <laughs> it makes it look cartoonish. It does, it makes it look cartoonish. It mm -hmm. Okay, so um, now let me, I'm just gonna, as I've said, I, I, I think that covers the majority of what I want to say and answers the majority of questions that I get about this. Um, I will just kind of show you how I got started with this. I won't be um, taking the same amount of time because I'll tell you what was almost as time consuming as the actual fabric application was the fabric selection. Fabric selection is absolutely paramount when you are approaching a project like this. Spend the time to get your fabric selection correct because once you've done once you've done that fabric selection right, the rest of this is paint by number. Okay? So also maybe even spend the money to get the fabric yes, right. Yes. Don't yes. just pull fabrics from your stash just because you have it and you want to get rid of it. Because yes. it will look, it won't look good. And don't just use batiks. Incorporate patterns and prints and. Great. Okay. Thank you for reminding me that. So reminding me of that. So if you're going to do this horse, do it right. If you're going to invest the time. If you're going to invest the time invest in the right fabric. So pull in anything that you think might work from your stash and then figure out the holes. You might need to buy some fabric. Um, part of the reason that I don't have a kit that's sold for this is because I used an analogous color palette. I used, I pulled in tons of different pieces of fabric. I haven't counted, but I think there are dozens of different fabrics in the horse. So the way I approached this when I was getting started is I took my, you know, I, I, I look in my scraps first. So I, let me take these and put these over here. These are purples. Let me set this out of the way. Okay, so the way to get started is um, first of all, consider the values. Consider how many values are in the horse. I think there's six. It's either six to eight. And um, anywhere in that number is good. So what you need to do then is think about creating six to eight value sets. So a value set is a combination of fabric that 
is similar enough in value so that you can see that it's distinct from the other value sets. So remember I said starting with the dark. So if I were to get started pulling fabric for this, I would, I just start looking in my fabric selection. Do you mind if I put this seat up, Amelia? Mm -hmm. I'm really low. Okay. Um, so I begin by just pulling out fabric pieces that I think might work in, I think it's the easiest to start with the dark values. Because as I said, then that sets your sets your um, your spectrum. So the fabric that I'm using in this, I actually don't have one single solid piece of fabric. I do have lots of batiks and I love to incorporate printed fabric like this. Um, again, I, I encourage you, if you haven't already, I encourage you to look into my, um, my book or my paid video tutorials about uh, color theory and why I'm looking for fabric like this but this is this is a great piece because it has little pops of color overall it looks very dark and so it's gonna go in my dark but I love adding that little pop of color it makes it look very sophisticated it makes the final collage look so interesting um, okay so this is a good now I could just keep going. In fact, I would keep going. I would just keep adding to this to this value set. That's value set number one. And then I might go to my very lightest um, and see what I can pull out that would work in my very, very lightest value set. Uh, let's see. So I probably need to pull over my, these are all my grays and I think I'm gonna need to dig into some others because I don't think I have enough here to do an appropriate size value set. I always aim to do, oh, five to 12, five to whatever. The more fabric that you can incorporate into your value set, the better your collage is going to be. Now you might not use all the fabric that you've pulled, but that's your palette and it makes it so much easier to pull more fabric than you might need. Okay, so I'm getting lights. They might be two different value sets though. Yeah, I can kind of see that happening right now. So Amelia, will you grab my, um, my light, my white? I think it's right down over here on the right. This, yeah just so that I can kind of have a few more pieces of light fabric. I don't know that I would go with white, but you get the idea. Did you mention the backs of fabric? Oh, no, that's a good one. So in fact, I'll use this to demonstrate that. So I will often use the back side of fabric if I need to push my value spectrum into the lights. So you can either go buy more fabric or you can use the reverse side of your fabric. And in that case, I would cut this in half while I would prepare it with my fusible web and then cut it in half, well, no, cut it in half and then prepare one side with, so that I can use this side and one so that I can use that side. So that I would put in my lights. Um, things like this, that's a really, that's the reverse side of this piece of fabric. Um, but it looks really good in this value set. So this is kind of how I, how I work. Um, and the ultimate goal is that I am trying to create, as I said, six to eight. Start with a minimum of six values. Six is advanced. Um, it's very, very tricky. And this is part of the reason too that I encourage you if you're feeling a little overwhelmed by this, maybe don't use analogous colors. Maybe just stick to one color family um, because the more colors that you incorporate into the design, the more your brain has to discern between not only color but also value. Um, it just removes one, one extra thing to think about. Um, 
So do you see how I do this? Okay, I think I actually have the foundation now of one, two, three, four, five, six, six value sets. So I've got my, my light lights, and then I've got my dark darks. Everything in between those two are, they are what I call transitional shades or transitional value sets. So you'll see the dark dark, then we've got the, the next value set. And all I need to be able to see is that as a whole, this value set is darker than this value set as a whole. There might be a few variations in the values in this set, but as a whole, I can discern between those two value sets. So once I've done that, and I haven't, obviously I would fill this out, um, I would add six to 12 pieces of fabric in every value set. And then keep these sets distinct so that you know this one is one, two, three, four, five, six or reverse, whatever you want. Then the other clue that I would give you, the other hint would be to label your foundation panel. Take a pen or a pencil and mark, this is gonna be one, this is two, this is three, and you can kind of just go in here and you don't have to do it all at once, but wherever you get started, just kind of, it kind of helps you keep track of what goes where, okay? Um, another reason, as I mentioned just a minute ago, that I really like having, um, I really like using Light Steam Seam 2 is for this reason. Let's see here. I don't have a pen to score the paper, but it's coming off just fine. Okay, the fact that this has this temporary adhesive is super, super helpful. Let me show you why one reason you're going to really appreciate it because as I lay pieces down and you know because you've done collage before that all of these pieces have to overlap and the idea is they're going to overlap and cover the entire foundation panel. Can you see that okay Amelia? Mm -hmm. I'm zoomed in. Okay so the thing that I was going to show you you might lose track of this line as you go so one other reason that it's really helpful to have this this temporary adhesive is that I can lift that up and just and look and see what's underneath so that I don't entirely lose my place. Sometimes that can happen when you're working on this area on you know on detailed areas of the quilt. Now the other thing that I will say is you don't have to be super super precise. It doesn't matter if you go outside the lines. It doesn't matter if this value set is invades this other value set. The, this is a guideline, okay? Your shapes, your values do not have to match every single little nook and cranny that you see in the design. This is an impressionist piece of artwork. So, Pardon me. Yeah, suggestion. exactly. It's a suggestion of a horse and it's that's what makes it really super effective. So my final words are take the time to really dive in on your fabric selection. Um, apply principles of color theory to your fabric selection. Think hard about that and learn more if you need to. You'll learn as you go too on this project. Um, the other thing I will say is trust your fabric selection. Once, you've, once you feel really good about what you've selected, then let the fabric do its work. That's where the magic happens in collage. The interplay between different pieces of fabric just can't be, you can't envision it. You can't envision how things are gonna end up. It's just kind of this most creative, um, interesting thing that happens. So let the fabric do its work and just have fun. So get a good book, press your panel, start working on your fabric selection and good luck. And I, um, I hope to see your, your, your uh, end product in one of the Facebook pages. Um, if you need help, the Collage Quilter Academy Facebook page is 
or a Facebook group is a great place to ask questions and see what other people have done with this project. And um, also join, if you don't, if you're not already, the Collage Quilter Facebook group. That's a wonderful group and a good resource. So I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck, have fun, I will see you again soon.